Everyone, new 12 here. Thank you guys for enjoying my series because I'm going to just assume that you've watched my playlist of the question arc and all of that. I just want to go over my post thoughts of everything that went on around it. And if you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. It's all over my channel. And uh, I just want to go through each chapter, what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy about each one. So starting with the first chapter, I really enjoyed how it set this, the tone of what the series was going to talk about. Because I, I like the mystery aspect of it, I really do. Because it kind of just throws you into this situation that you have no idea what the hell is going on. And it just gives you a, a general overview of what is happening. At least in that scenario. Uh, what I didn't like... Uh, for the first game, it wasn't necessarily bad. I wouldn't mind some more character building, but that's what the other chapters were for, so I can't really blame it on that. Really, that would be the only complaint. And the music was a lot better in the other chapter, so... On a music standpoint, it was weaker in the first chapter. At least that's what I could go on. But I, I, the first one is a great introductory. It really got me hooked on it. It made me want to read more, so it did its job. Because the whole point of the first one is to read this next one. That's its end goal. So it, it definitely achieved that. Uh, the second game, I like the focus on new characters and actually delving into more of a background. And go into more detail about the characters. Same with... The third and fourth one. I, I can just go ahead and lump those together. And say I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, the second one was definitely my favorite out of all of them. If I really had to pick one, I would say the second one was by far my favorite. Probably by a long shot, actually. Just because it was a lot longer. Well, I wouldn't say a lot longer. It was just noticeably longer and... I, I liked the more background and more character development that it had versus, say, the first chapter, I would say. And for that matter, compared to the other ones, I, I like the background building on that one a little bit better. Because I really, as much as I like the mystery aspect, I really like just the calm, everyday aspect as well. I really enjoy that part of the series. That I really feel that some people undervalue. That they don't really appreciate just how nice it is to have that nice reprieve of just an everyday normal life. Because it, the way they have it set up, and I think it's brilliant, is that they show what it's like right before everything goes to shit. And you really get sucked into the good feelings, the happy days, all that just the good happy feelings and then once the shit hits the fan it's like god it really makes the situation that much worse because you realize these people that are friends usually kill each other or get killed by each other and it just makes the situation that much more serious it gives more weight to what's happening and can really bring out a lot more emotions that way I've definitely gotten way more attached to the characters than I would have ever imagined to. Because I usually have a hard time attaching to characters. But I, I mean, it's just brilliant writing. I mean, I cannot talk enough about the writing in all four of the chapters. It's amazing. He is an amazing writer. And has told an amazing story. But for the fourth, uh, the second game for the flaws, there's not much. I would have liked it to end differently, but it's supposed to be sad and tragic, so I can't get my own personal ending, I guess. Which sucks. The third game, it was good as well. I like the character building. I like the insight of. Uh, because, you know, Keiichi going fucking crazy. 
Oh uh, yeah, P.S. There's spoilers. If anyone's new and watching this, get over yourself. Why are you watching or a view of something? <laughs> you get over yourself. Duh. But uh, you, it shows the descent into madness that Keiji goes through, and it shows the struggles of someone trying to be so, someone else's brother while they're going through physical abuse and mental abuse. And it's really hard in that sense. It was a hard novel to get through. That one was. I wouldn't say... It was harder to get through that one for different reasons than the second one for me. I had more emotional attachment to the second one. But for the third one, it's just... The fact that they're younger girls, that's what really bothered me. And what made it hard for me. It wasn't any emotional attachment in that way. It was just that the fact that they're younger is what really... Oh, God, it really... It was painful. It was painful to read some of the parts. And I really don't want to read it again. But I know for a fact I'll probably have to read something that bad, if not worse, in the future. Because there has to be an answer arc for it. So we get to revisit it, probably. That'll be fun. The main flaw I had with it was kind of the ass pull of this is the one chapter Keiji decides to give a damn about Satoko. Which, I mean, it kind of came out of nowhere, in my opinion. And this is all my opinion. You can disagree with it however much you want. It probably won't change my opinion on characters and their relationships they have with other characters, etc., etc. But I just felt like it came out of nowhere. I mean, that it was honestly just there just so the story could take place. That would be the weakest part of the writing, but it, I mean, there's really no other way for him to give a fuck. Because in the other two, it, he, it was almost kind of a change of character for him in that one chapter. And I don't know why. Maybe in the answer arc it explains, but I doubt it would. I, I mean, it just seemed like it was out of nowhere that he decided to care all of a sudden. Because knowing from the other two games, I obviously can say, ah, I still wouldn't care. If I had no other prior knowledge, I might have cared more. I guess. That's the problem with doing it. It's because you're going to have prior knowledge of other chapters. So it's hard to disassociate each chapter because they're going to be independent stories that aren't influenced by what happened previous. So it is, in that sense, hard to get over that fact. And I guess I just have to get over that fact. That's a different story. So it's still set in the same universe, but it's still a different kind of... I don't want to say timeline, because I don't think it's timeline. <laughs> I don't think this is going to turn into some space travel, time traveling weird shit. I really don't. It'll be impressive if he can ma manage to make it into that, but, you know, that would be interesting. Well, I just don't see it becoming that, so... It's not really a timeline, it's just like an alternate reality, I guess. And in that alternate reality, it's just that Keiichi actually is more... You know, caring about Satoko. Than, you know, other characters. And, and other points, I, I don't know. He could have been more caring in other arcs. Because if he was that caring in all the arcs, it would make sense. But it was just that one arc that he was. He seemed to be more caring than in the other ones. But that's just how I see it as. The fourth one, it was short. I can see why it was short. I mean, it. I don't want to say it was thrown together. I think it was just kind of a bonus thing. Because it even says that it wasn't intended. It was more of a bonus. Just to add to what's going on. To give more of a background. But it helped shed some light on Rika's character, Oishi. I still fucking hate him. And it introduced uh, the detective, which I doubt... Since he wasn't mentioned in the first three chapters, I doubt he's actually that important. And I doubt we'll ever see him again. Or he'll make an appearance. I really doubt it. The f It was good for the fact of... 
it aided to speculations of it being a curse or a man-made that it was already set in stone and a curse. It, that's the problem is because it was pushing in one way but I was kind of seeing it in the other way as well and that's when my theory comes into place of what the hell is going on there has to be something I'm going to assume that the first game is going to be regular reality that is what always happens I'm going to just assume that because it came first so that's why I uh, it's safe to assume that is your initial point. And whether I'm right or wrong, I don't care at this point. There's no, I'm basing this off of questions only. And the way I've been thinking about it, something happens in each of the arcs that are specific. In the second one, it's Keiichi meeting Shion. And uh, not giving Mion the, the stuffed doll, bear doll, whatever the fuck it was. I think it was a doll. Which I still would have. But I digress. It would have helped the story. It would have been better. <laughs> I mean, it was just obvious. Obvious you do that. But it was meeting Shion and not giving her the doll is what set that one into kind of the tailspin that was it. In the third one, it Satoko's uncle appearing is what screwed that one up. So, I don't know why certain actions have such drastic effects on the outcome. What's causing it? All the deaths and disappearances happen up until the fifth year. Into there where they are the, all the exact same. Even on the fifth year, technically the first two, Tomitake and Takano, both of them die. Or disappear. Because I think in the first one they said they never found her. And we're still looking for her, so she disappeared on that one. The point being that these things always happen. Which is what Rika was talking about in the fourth one. That it's kind of set in stone that she was going to die. Which happened in the third... I, I assume they're talking about the third one. So the four... For the fourth chapter supersedes the third one, in the sense that it comes it's the prologue to it, I'd imagine. Because it's the same she died in the same way. At least I believe that's so. And the way that helps would be She has some power. I that's just it's regard. It's impossible for her not to have some supernatural power, whether she is Oyashiro sama or possessed. I'm still iffy on either. She has that sense of a split personality, kind of like uh, Rena does. In that, at some point, she just snaps, and turns into this other persona. So it's almost as if she is possessed, or it's like dormant within her. And that needs a certain catalyst to get awoken, uh, awakened, or awoken, whatever it is. To be, you know, realize what, to give her prophecy or whatever. Whatever the situation may be. Which, if she is, that means in every other chapter she has this power. So, theoretically, that's how she would know about the, in the second chapter, about how me, uh, Shion and Keiichi broke into the ritual storehouse. That's how she would know about that. In the first one, she talks about, God, I want to say, talks about, you know, being paranoid and all that stuff. I don't remember exactly what it was about, but she did mention something that was odd. And now that I think about it, I can't actually remember it. Fuck me. Either way, she said something odd. I, I want to say it was 
something, something already happened, blah, blah, blah. Something along those lines. Either way, she would have known that due to her powers. I don't know how strong these powers are, if she can see everything or just a few snippets. But I definitely believe there's a supernatural element that can't be denied in this story. That, But I also think it's man-made as well. That man, that man is trying to force this thing to keep occurring. Like in the first one, the second one, the annual killings, that is. Because it was that Satoko's parents were pushed off because Rika had said that. Instead of they fell or slipped, they were pushed to their death. Or, yeah, I think they said pushed to their death, not fell. So, it shows that someone had malicious intent. Maybe even fucking Zatago killed him. That would be really fucked up. If she's like the mastermind behind all of it, that would be like mind-blowing. But maybe she could have pushed him off. Someone did. Someone murdered him. Uh, the second one, her parents were killed. Yeah, they was, uh, yeah, killed instead of died to a mysterious plague. So it sounds like it was something to do with someone actually in giving him something to make him sick. Injecting him with something. But it's still the question of what the hell that syringe is from the first chapter and the second one. Because we don't see it in the third one at all. They never mention it. It's mentioned, it's mentioned in passing in the fourth one due to the fact that he was injected with something to kill him. At least that's how I infer the text to be. Because most people would say he died of illness, not killed. At least I would imagine that, especially when you're uh, predicting stuff. You'd want to be slightly more accurate with your terminology. But we see it in the first one and the second one. But we don't see it ever again. Because in the second one, if I'm not mistaken, when they said they found Rika's body, it was that they had a, she had a syringe on her. I want to say that's true. I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure it said that. Pretty sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm like 98% sure. That they found a syringe on her body. Because I even mentioned that. That I noticed that. But. Th what's really interesting is the first one. Is when Mion or possibly some. Or possibly even Shion. I don't know. Because at that point we were unaware of. That Shion at that moment. So she could have switched places with Mion at that point. We don't know. And injected him, or at least tried to inject Keiichi with some form of, I don't know what the hell it is. I assume he wasn't injected due to the fact that he kind of blanked out. He could have, and that's what made him claw his throat out. But I don't want to, I'd imagine it would be some sort of sedative at first, instead of something to make him go insane. Because I can't imagine them wanting to get him to go insane by injecting him with this stuff and them only being in the room with him instead of having a bunch of people to hold him down. At least that's how I'd imagine it. So the syringe has to be made by someone. Like the concoction inside of it has to be made by someone. It has to be man-made. Since they said they'd never seen it before, so it's probably something not natural. And it does something inside of someone. It made KG kill himself, after all. Possibly. And it's... And I'd imagine that's how Tomitake was killed. Is by injecting him. Whatever the liquid was. But for the actual what's happened, I think it's a mixture of man and the fear of the curse that keeps it perpetuated. 
why it's happening i can only imagine i don't know i don't know what the motive would be for a person to keep it going i'd imagine it would be a deeply religious person that's trying to get it to continue i don't think rika slash oyashiro wanted to keep going i can't imagine that because they die well she dies they well technically it could be two people so they die Riga dies in it so I doubted she wanted to happen which she clearly says she doesn't want to die I mean who would want to die so it's not a sacrifice in that sense I would say it's a deeply religious person for the kind of like trying to get people to conform to it and stop non-believers from not believing in it. Because there are some villagers that don't believe in it, kind of like Mion doesn't. Or at least she's expressed feelings that she doesn't believe that it is truly a curse. While Shion seems to believe it is a curse. At least that's how I would imagine it being. Because I'm pretty sure... Shion believes in the curse. Because she seems to take it, the issue too seriously. Just to play it off. Mion just plays it off and acts like it's nothing. And I tend to agree with her that there is no curse. I, I'm more influenced... I think it's more influenced by humans trying to give the appearance that it's a curse. But it's a long plan. Five years, that is. And it takes a lot of work, so it's not a small, it's not just one or two people doing it. It has to be an organization doing it. It could be the, it's not, I can't imagine it being the damn project people, or the Hinamizawa damn protest group, Defense Alliance people, ju just because it doesn't make sense, because Mion would know about it. Because in the third one, Keiichi protests Mion, or possibly Shion at that point. I think it's Mion because she talks about how it's not a curse and she can't do anything about it. And to, you know, calm down around Rena around the curse because it's, uh, she gets really, uh, heated when she talks about it. <laughs> so I believe it's, uh, Mion at that point. But she, uh, I don't believe she knows about it if it's really... Uh, so I don't think it's that group of people that have any influence over it. But I do believe it's people close to the Sonazaki family. They just don't include Mion in it. Which I don't know why that would be the case. It has to be someone with power. A group with power. So all I can think of is someone in the Sonazaki family or a group inside of it trying to get people to conform more to the religion than what the village is at this point. At least that's all I can go on at this point. Why gas is released, I... I can only imagine that's man-made. I can't imagine that being just random spur of the moment, one in a million shot of happening. Because they don't mention it in the second one. Because Oishi would have said that, like, oh, you know, he's always gotten fucked up. And it's just, it's a decent amount of time after, you know, Keiichi is injured and all of that. Whether it's however many days after Watanagashi or not, I don't know. Because it happens... Uh, if I were to do spot math, KG was out for over a day for that one time. He killed him on the night of it. So I have to go, it was fine, whatever. I would say like four or five days after Watanagashi is when it happened. Maybe even six. For the second game, I don't... I think it was that amount of time. The first one, Keiichi dies, so we can't really know about it. And it only happens in that, technically, the two scenarios. The only one that's prolonged is Keiichi's suffering at that point. I would imagine Oishi would have told him about it, and I think it's five days afterwards. Even six. 
because it's a significant amount of time after Watanagashi, because Keiichi's extremely paranoid. After that, along with Shio, even though he's telling her to calm the fuck down. <laughs> calm the fuck down, please. Your freaking out isn't going to help us in any scenario. But, at least that's what I believe. I think most of it's man-made. That, I just can't imagine Rika wanting to die and killing herself. Just to fuck over a whole village. It just doesn't seem like... It just doesn't seem plausible, in my opinion. So that's my theory on why it's different each time. The, just different scenarios that happen right before Watsunagashi that affect the outcome. I think that's all it is. But I think if everything ran its natural course, I would say it's the first game that's the original, technically regular reality nothing goes wrong it's just that's what's gonna ha always happen really I'd imagine because there has to be a reason he they'd play that one first instead of say the second one or the third one but let's go over some characters why not I'll go over my favorite characters least favorite and everyone in between I won't talk about, you know, minor characters because there's no point in them. Worst character by far, Oishi. I fucking hate him. He's the worst. Every single chapter, I hate him. The first one, he wasn't terrible. He wasn't terrible necessarily, except, you know, he's talking about how my friends and all, well, Keiichi's friends, are the terrible people, blah, blah, blah. It's their fault, blah, blah, blah. That part it was kind of like, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but there's not much he could do in that situation. The second one, eh, he's starting to cross the boundaries. Third one, he's an asshole. Fourth one, still a fucking jerk off. And I, there's no redeeming qualities about him at all. There really isn't. I just hate how he conducts himself. And all of that. I mean, he just... He screams the stereotypical corrupt cop. And you just can't enjoy that aspect. There's there's no way you could ever have him as a favorite. I, I just don't see it. Next on the list would probably be... It's always a toss-up with these two characters, in my opinion. It's all Between Takano and Shion, I hate both of them so much. Takano for the reason that she just has this weird fucking hard on for fucking with stuff that you shouldn't fuck with. And that and pressuring other people to go join her in doing this. And you know, fuck fuck safety. This is worth it. So I don't like her in that aspect. She and I don't like that and I sincerely believe and will probably never be unconvinced that she killed and tortured Mion in the second game. And I can never get over the fact that it, that's her fucking sister. Let alone Mion. But the fact that you do that to your own sister, it's kind of... It's depraved. She, she's just... She seems like this very cold, unattached human being. That she really just doesn't give a fuck about anyone else. Or what they might go through. She just seemed so uncaring, so cold, so distant. And I just can't, I can't like that. I just don't. <laughs> I don't like that aspect. So, I mean, they tied for the next spot. It's really hard. Each, each one has their benefits, their good sides, their bad sides. The only reason I like Shion is because she brings out a different side in Mion, so I'll fucking take it. Takano, I, I really don't like anything about her. She's fucking terrible. She's a terrible person. Uh, moving on. Uh, other characters that really aren't mentionable or just kind of in the middle of the pack. That would go with Ira, Chie, you know, all those just kind of minor-ish characters. They get a sprite and all, but they're kind of like, 
in the background, not really mattering. Nothing really stands out a good from them. Nothing really stands out that's bad about them. Uh, moving on, then there's fucking Rena. Rena, she's slightly better than average, but what brings her down in my personal preferences is the bipolar nature of her character. And how, once you mention the curse, she snaps and goes into a different, her different bipolar nature. Because she's either extremely happy and bubbly, or she's cr batshit insane. I don't like really either aspect of her, honestly. I don't, I don't like the overly positive aspect of her, because there are negative things in life, and you can't always just be happy, carefree, go lucky, all that bullshit. That's just not how it works. I'm just a... I don't know. I'm a jaded human being, so I guess that's why. At least that's how... I, I just can't... I don't like people that are always happy, always the upbeat side. I like people that have a touch in reality that aren't always like that. But I also like people that don't go insane whenever you mention something. <laughs> It's kind of like, I don't know. It, it It's it's a weird combination. Having this happy-go-lucky girl, but she turns into this psycho that breaks fucking windows in a school. Ugh, it's just kind of... And beats the shit out of her schoolmates. It's kind of like, eh, I don't like that. Can't like that at all. Then surprisingly high for a character... I don't hate Keiichi's character all that much, honestly. Oh yeah, I want to put Satsuko in with, like, Irei in them. I don't know, there's not... Nothing really stands out that's good about her. She complains a lot. I don't like that. What's good about her? Pff, not much. I really just don't like the complaining aspect of her, honestly. I feel she complains slightly too much. Yeah, she has a rough life, I guess, but... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you have to take your beatings. Well, God, that sounds terrible. No, not like in that sense. God, that that's way worse than what I fucking intended. Holy shit. What? You have to take your lot in life, and it's how you grow from it. I, I always believe in that. But I, I don't know. I just don't enjoy her character type. Just the overly complaining uh, she just acts really entitled honestly she acts spoiled even though she has a terrible life at home she just acts extremely spoiled in life and it, i don't know it's just i don't like her character that much so i'd say i'd put her below rena in the scale and then we got keiichi I don't hate his character, believe it or not, because he's consistent. He is, for the most part, consistent, and I have to respect that. I have to respect that. Even though he makes decisions I hate, and I think he's stupid, he's consistent. He's a consistent character, a consistent lead character, and I can't fault the writing for that. I would have rather him have a different character type, but it's consistent throughout these stories so far. I can't complain at all about that. The fact that it's consistent, I, I, I really can't complain. It's it's good. Some decisions he's made, it's it's intelligent ish. I mean, I'd still think I'd have the better outcomes, given if I was put in the stories. However, I'm not, so I have to take Keiichi's stupidity and accept it. Though I think. I, I tend to be a little rough on Keiichi, but eh, he can get over it. But the whole... He's just extremely consistent, and I have to give him bonus points for that. It would be so much easier just to fuck him over and say, this guy just goes along with the flow whenever possible. But he seems to be more consistent than just that. So I can't fault him for that. After that, really, there's only two characters left, if I'm not forgetting any. 
I don't think I am. Yeah, I'm probably not. Uh, then we have Rika. She took a beating in my favorability, and I almost considered putting her under Keiichi. Honestly. And just because of the fourth chapter and how crazy she is. Because I was under the impression she was completely normal. Holy shit, was I wrong. I was wrong, wrong, wrong. I never believed I could be so wrong in an assessment of a character. Holy shit. I never assumed that she was either A, possessed, or B, had a split personality of someone crazy, and that she can be fucked up in that way. She can be, and she is fucked up in that way. And there is nothing... <laughs> Other than that, she's an adorable little girl, and she was really cute, all that all that good stuff that you can say about Rika, you can't really take that away from her, but holy shit, I didn't think she had that in her, that she was that crazy. Holy shit, that, that's it really, that's the one big negative of her, she really didn't have that many flaws, other than that, that's a big flaw. Also, I think she relies too much on her Q factor, though that's just her manipulation tactics at first. Well, she got to respect that, of course. And then number one, obviously, being Mio. I mean, anyone who's ever watched a video already knows. Favorite character. There's just so many factors of why I love her character. One being nostalgia, because I know people that, in my childhood, three females, when I was younger, all throughout grade school, that exactly mimic what Mion's emotions and personalities like. It's scary. It really is. Like, if you can, if I combined all three of them, it would be Mion. And if you aged her up, like, eight years. She would be like that. I mean, it's the competitive nature, physical beauty... Uh, you know, the roughish exterior, but there's, uh, sweetness inside, all that stuff. All, all of her character traits honestly get it just exemplified by my nostalgia in my mind. So I just go back to those days of my grade school and early middle school and think about that and think, holy shit, I would have a great time hanging out with her just as friends, but also moving on past that relationship into something deeper. And, you know, more emotionally bonded. Just because I'm that much more used to that kind of emotional outpouring of a female. And other than that, I just, I don't know, I like the way she was written. I like her dialogue choices. She's extremely... I, ha I have to say it. I think she's the most normal character of, of all of them. I think she is normal. Completely normal. Not insane. At all. In the slightest. I don't believe she's actually... Technically, Keiichi killed himself, so... She indirectly killed him, but she didn't kill him. Possibly. I'm still saying Keiichi killed himself... So she technically indirectly made him kill himself, but either way, still she didn't kill him directly. And it's in part with Rena, so it's only accessory to murder. So, it's not full up murder. She hasn't killed anyone. <laughs> Rena hasn't either, so I have to give Rena that. But she's more scary. I mean, Mion hasn't gone full crazy. It's always... Keiichi's fault that she's either sad or gets upset because she cries in the first one she cries in the second one god it makes me sad because <laughs> I don't know I just going back to this nostalgia thing I hate it hate it when anyone I know is upset and it gets me pissed off and I just go immediately into this protection mode and want to defend them because I'm ex uh, that's just what I naturally did in middle school and high school and middle school and grade school and in somewhat in high school because that's just my in my nature I'm laid back but once you 
poke the bear, I get pissed. I get really pissed. And I will defend said person as far as I need to. Even if it ends up with me, you know, getting my shit kicked in, I'm still going to defend them. Because that's just how it works. And that's, uh, it's happened before. Mmm. I don't miss those days. I'm a little smarter now when it comes to that, but... Yeah, I wasn't the smartest person when picking fights. But I'd defend them. I wouldn't care. It didn't even cross my mind. So I can see why KH is emotional in that sense. When I was... I won't even say his age, because at actually at his age I was more laid back. And more... You know... Logically thinking than what KH is now. Because he's not that young. I mean, he's like, what, 16, 17? Because Mion's a year older, so 17, 18, probably. So that's fine by me. I tend to err on that they're older than their youngest part. So I'd say Mion's more 18. Keiji's probably around 17, almost. 16, early 17. Same with Rena. I see Rika and Satko around 13, 12, 13, prob probably. I try to err on the side that they're older than what they appear. Anyways, why I like her character so much. I like the development in the ch second chapter of her. And it really shows her softer side. Because at one point in the maid cafe scenes, that was Mio. Now, I mean, that just straight up was. I think the first one sighting of her was Mio. Because she was extremely flustered. But the next time, or the few times after, when she's not flustered at all, I think that's more Shion. Because it seems whenever it comes to Keiichi, I think she obviously has emotions for her, for him. She has a she has romantic feelings for him, which I mean he's extremely dense, so he'll never fucking see it. It's there though. It's pretty obvious. It's there. But. I think halfway through it, it goes back to Shion, but the good thing about Shion that I give her a lot of credit for is that she brings out that more feminine side of Mion and makes her come out of her shell a bit more, which is good. She needs to, because I will never complain if she comes out of her female shell or comes out and becomes more feminine. But I think she needs more aid with that, obviously, because she's clearly self-conscious about it. That's the, her biggest flaw, is her over-self-consciousness. Which, that's easy to fix, though, if you're Keiichi in this situation. And that... I don't see that as a character flaw, I see it as more of a... In a fact... Or a fact, well, a little fraction of her character that it makes her even that more appealing because it makes her seem that much more realistic because more people can relate to that sense though me being a male I don't know what females go through in that sense though I have heard females talk about it so I have a slight understanding of what they have to go through very slight I don't know the inner workings of everything but I've heard what they talk about. But the point being that I really don't see flaws with her, with her character. She's extremely loyal to her friends. I admire that. I, I exemplify that actually. That is an extremely good quality to have whenever that comes up. Loyalty for friends is a must. If I'm gonna be friends with someone, they better be fucking loyal as a friend and defend as a friend. Because I sure as hell will. Uh, what else do I love about her? Physical beauty, of course, she's extremely attractive. Shion is attractive because obviously she looks the exact same. I just can't get over her personality. Because personality for me is just as important as physical beauty. 
Because if I, I'm not going to get along with someone, what's the point of how beautiful she is if she's a complete heartless bitch that doesn't care about anyone else's emotions? Uh, no one's going to enjoy pre being in her presence. Uh, she doesn't seem to be broken in a way of psychological brokenness. Kind of like Rena, she's psychologically broken, which is why her bipolar nature... Which is not to say that people with bipolar are broken. It's just how it works. It's that appearance. That whenever this topic comes up, it's going to be a shit show. Of course, you can try to make it that you never want to talk about it, but it stunts free speech in that sense. And I don't like anything that hinders free speech at all. And it's important that it, you know, it stays around. Regardless. And, um, going on, other personality traits of her. I like the competitive nature of her because I'm extremely competitive as well. So that, you know, it, it's kind of like, eh, I like that. I like the fact that she's extremely competitive because I can relate to that. Because, as always as a child, I've always been competitive. Because that's just how I was... That's just how my DNA is made up. I don't like to lose. I only like to win. And anyone who can offer me a challenge, I love to meet. And I love to challenge them in any way possible. And that's just how my na nature is, really. But this is getting, starting to get overly long. Holy shit, I've been talking for a while. I could talk about Mion for another hour, though. About how fucking great she is. And why I think she really is the best character. Again, my opinion. And my opinion is obviously more valuable than anyone else's opinions. Because that's how it works. I just, I don't know. I love her character. I love the design of her character. There's really no flaw, and plus in the th in the fourth cha chapter and how I can never fault it, it gave me young Mio, which is honestly fucking adorable. She is an adorable little girl, let alone a very attractive older female as well, which makes it even better. But anyways, my next project I actually have uh, for you. It's going to be interesting. All I can say about it is I'm fucking tired of waiting and I want to continue that's all I'll say about the next project it should come relatively soon because I'm almost finished with the Wind Waker and all said filler of what that series is which I only have eh, if I had to guess maybe four or five six episodes left I'm probably gonna cut out most of the grindy middle section of me looking for shit because the last dungeon, it'll take two or three episodes. Another area I'm thinking of will take one. And that's, you know, about it. Other than that. But just know, I'm tired of waiting. I'm going to do my next series. I have... This is winter break, so I am recording, though my internet here is not nearly as good as it what it was. So hopefully... Hopefully, I'll be able to keep up my one video a day. Just promise. If not, then understand. I'll be getting out as much as possible. And know that sometime in mid, early January, it'll start back up into that one per day. And it will be great, wonderful, and I can't wait to start recording again. And uh, I hope you guys stick out, stick around and enjoy. I know I've al already enjoyed what I've been doing. Even if it's been only six months or so. It ha has it been six months? I don't know. I don't care how long it's been, actually. That's all I care about. I don't care how long it's been. <laughs> I enjoy it. I love doing it. And it's fun. And I will probably never stop doing it until the site closes down. 
or a new site opens up, that's even better. All you have to know is if a new site does open up, I'll be going there. So, stick around for the ride. I'm going to enjoy it, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. I've loved the question arc, and honestly, if no one's bought, if someone hasn't bought it, why not buy it? Support the owner of it. Support the writer. It's such good writing. I mean, I can't get over how good the writing is. It's the it's some of the best I've ever seen in this kind of setting. Because a lot of them miss out the important details. This is dripping with details that are of the mo utmost importance. And, uh, important. and it's almost a travesty for someone not to read it. It's, it's so good. Anyone who wants a mystery needs to read it. But I've been rambling on long enough. I've been talking for like an hour now. <laughs> Whether I got it down or not, probably not. But I love all I can say is Meon's best character, hands down. Uh, I can have an argument for years of why I feel that she is the best character in this story. Of course, people can have their own opinions. I'm just saying my opinion is probably the right one. <laughs> Anyways, this is a great story. I can't wait for, you know, the next series that's coming out. At least the next big series that I'm going to be pushing out here soon. Like I said, probably in the next week or so. I expect to see some videos coming out, possibly, hopefully. Don't quote me on that. It depends how fast I can get through Wind Waker. Hopefully I can get through it fast. The dungeon should be fast. Final boss should be fast. Because that's all I really have left is scavenging and final boss. Other than that, I'm pretty much done. But I'm not going for a 100% completion. That would take far too long, far too many weeks and days and hours. And though that, in the near future, next series is coming out, and it will be, it will be nice. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you guys are too. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you have not already done so. I've just recently hit 70, and no doubt, now that I said that, it will probably go down. Whatever. I can look at 17 and say, you know what, that's pretty good. It's higher than I ever intended. 17 higher than I ever intended. And I'm very grateful for that. And I hope to keep getting larger, a larger audience, to reach more people and so that they can enjoy said content. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.